Hey everyone, this is Ross Fratty and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk all about fruits and vegetables, uh, important announcements, things that I uh, need to address on my channel or things that I think are really interesting or things that I'm very passionate about in this universe and uh, in the fruit and vegetable universe that is. But anyway, um, in this episode we're going to talk a lot about um, figs and things that are going on, what I'm doing, persimmons. Uh, we're going to talk about seedlings and where to get those kind of things. And in, in the first part here, I want to do an announcement. I want to thank everybody who has been supporting me on FigBid and buying my merchandise in the form of cuttings and, and trees. I've also gotten some Patreon subscribers. I really appreciate that, guys. If you were interested in buying any kind of uh, you know merchandise for me in terms of you know fig trees or cuttings or whatever it is, this is going to be the last set of cuttings that I have here on FigBid. So whatever is on this website, that's all I got. Um, I really do want to thank everybody for supporting me. I've sold so many, so many cuttings all throughout the world, um, all throughout the United States. Uh, it's amazing that a lot of you guys are growing figs all over the place and that the demand is so high. So um, it's really, really cool. So yeah, if you guys want to check, if you guys want to buy anything, Check out Figbit. It's in the link of the. Uh, it's in the, the link is in the description of this video. Holy yeah. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is actually uh, seedlings, and I'm actually considering buying some seedlings myself. And I didn't realize this was a thing, but you can get really affordable seedlings online. Um, now this is the Missouri Department of Conservation, and they have a whole huge list of different seedlings. Pawpaws already been sold out. They've got things like Osage Orange that you may want to graft maybe Che to. Uh, you can graft different things to Osage Orange which is really nice. They have pecans. Okay, they're out. But they have all kinds of uh, mulberries here. Different things that uh, maybe are a bit ornamental. But you know what? You can grow this stuff at your place and it's so, so cheap. I just cannot believe how cheap some of the stuff is and it look it's getting sold out so quickly so by this point I'm filming this on Sunday but you know hopefully at this point you guys have already seen this and can get on here black walnut seedlings I mean this is awesome so you know I'm gonna do it as soon as this video ends <laughs> but you know it's really nice to be able to buy seedlings and graft them yourself rather than buy the tree or even buy rootstock and then graft the tree yourself rather than buying the tree grafted already you know it's they you know you buy it at a premium there there's a lot more work that's involved and it's a, I think it's a bit more rewarding you can say that not only did you grow this tree yourself from a from a baby but you also grafted it yourself you selected the rootstock you selected the the variety to graft it onto or the uh, the variety the scion you know you you did that whole process and formed this tree into this beautiful thing five, ten years, twenty years later. So, I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting, guys. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is that we're really getting into planning. Um, I've had some nice time off, CPA exam. Things have kind of slowed down now that I took that. You know, tax season, we're in full gear now. But I've had some things, some time to plan for myself, uh, you know, this is one thing here. I'm essentially, I've created a to-do list and I recommend that you guys do this in the form of a spreadsheet, not just a written down sheet of paper that you're gonna throw out, fold up, lose. You know, it's gonna be not legible. Go on, you know, Google, Google Drive or Google Docs, create a spreadsheet and put together a to-do list. This is all the things that I need to do. It's still not complete, but I've got a lot of things rooting in the closet next to me, which I keep track of in a different spreadsheet, which I may show you guys at some point. We're also going to keep track of, we did this last year, every single thing that I'm using as rootstock is going to be in the spreadsheet. So I know what's rootstock, what's not. I know what varieties need to be grafted onto those rootstock and what doesn't. You know, here's some new varieties that we acquired this year that we're going to be grafting. Still need to finalize what's going to go on what, but you kind of get the gist of it, right? Then we have some extra trees that are going to be lying around in the spring, and I need to find a home for those. Maybe I'll trade them or sell them or, you know, figure out what I'm going to do with this stuff. Maybe I'll keep some of them 
this is kind of the pile in which I'm just not sure of just yet, right? Then you got a pile here of what what one gallon or smaller size trees I need to up pot and put together in pots so that I can have those in a permanent position. Um, I also need to change some pots. Pots have ripped, pots have broke, broken. Um, you know, I need to, to just change the pots, right? I also need to plant some things in ground. We are gonna be doing a huge fig tree planting this spring, putting a ton of varieties in ground. I really wish I had done this from the beginning. Um, this is one of my biggest recommendations for somebody starting out new. Put your trees in the ground. So, you know, although me, years later, I figured out some really interesting varieties that I can plant here in Zone 7 and probably have really good success with. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to plant these really interesting varieties in the ground come spring. And this is really just keeping track of all that. So, you know, that's all it is. I just want to talk about planning. It's very, very, very important. We also talked about and we touched on my garden plants. We have a whole thing here of where everything is going to go so that come spring, I don't need to be fumbling around trying to figure out where to put this, where to put that, what the spacing is, how many of this can go in this spot, how many of that can go here. It's all laid out. And the last thing I want to mention to you guys is that I did a recent video on persimmons. Uh, we have one actually coming out on pruning persimmons. It may have already come out. I'm not sure when I scheduled that yet. But the overwhelming um, you know, enthusiasm uh, over persimmons is, is uh, quite a surprise. I didn't know most of you guys even knew what persimmons was, and a lot of you guys seem inspired to grow persimmons. This is certainly a fruit that I would grow, and I got a lot of questions on this video about what I should grow, or what I would grow, uh, if you can only choose one, blah, 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 blah. I mean, there was a lot of questions revolving persimmons, and I really do think they should be in every grocery store in America. Um, they're as common as apples are in the Middle East. You find them everywhere. I mean, they are just extremely popular in other countries, yet we don't grow them. And it just blows my mind. You can grow them in any zone in this country. You can grow them anywhere. So I guess the most common question I got was, what variety would I grow if I could only choose one? And, uh, would I choose astringent versus non-astringent? I, when I first started out, I think this is a pretty common thing that happens is that a lot of people like the non-astringent ones. Being able to bite into that like an apple, having some crunch to it, those are really good. And I think they're more of a, a fruit that more people will enjoy and not have to kind of adjust to it. But once you start to eat really, really tasty astringent persimmons that are soft, you let them get soft, they are out of this world. They're on another level. They are far and beyond better than any non-astringents I've had. I can honestly say that. So that's my recommendation is I would get an astringent. I mean, to be honest with you, I would grow both. I would grow a hard variety and a soft variety. I would even grow an American persimmon. See what that one's about, right? Try them all. But if I had to choose one, it would be an astringent and it would be the variety called Sejo. Sejo is the best one. It means the very best one. That is the one I would choose. It's hardy in zone six. You have to kind of protect it from the wind. Some people report desiccation. Um, it's really tough to grow these things in zone six, but if you live in a warmer zone six, I would certainly go with Sejo. If you live in zone seven, certainly go with Sejo and on up, go with Sejo. I haven't really had too many fantastic American persimmons, but I certainly do enjoy them. They're not a fruit, though, I believe that you can kind of ship. And I've gotten them from friends, I've gotten them from nurseries, believe it or not, that were shipped to me, and they did not turn out well. They kind of tasted like Clorox. Um, but I've had them off the tree, and if you pick them at the right time, they're quite tasty. They're very good. Um, so, you know, I would certainly rank them as uh, probably Asian astringents, American astringents, and then Asian non-astringents. That's where I would rank them in terms of 
how much I enjoy them. Um, really enjoying the astringents. They're just so sweet. They melt in your mouth. You're like you're eating a dessert. It's like nature's candy. They taste like brown sugar. They taste like cinnamon. They taste like marshmallows. They taste like um, a little bit of pear, uh, a little bit of uh, apple, a little bit of... Uh, yeah, they're just incredible. It's an incredible fruit. So I want to just reiterate how much I think you guys should grow these. If you want an Asian-style persimmon, you live in a colder zone, grow a hybrid. Um, you want an Asian-style persimmon and you live in a bit of a warmer place, grow yourself Sejo. Those are my recommendations. And that's pretty much the episode of Fruit Talk, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one. And this was a, probably a little bit shorter than we're used to, I think. But, you know, uh, thank you everyone for watching these style of videos. I really like to do them. So I'll, take, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, guys.